Mr. President, the coronavirus is spreading rapidly. Do we have a cure yet? No, sir. Johnson, send in the deep learners. Hello, world. It's Siraj. And every single week, there's some new state-of-the-art advance in the capabilities of computers due to deep learning technology, which can be summed up as neural networks trained on big data sets using GPUs to make predictions. But not everyone can afford the expensive GPU stacks that the biggest companies like Google and Amazon use to train their own models. So I wondered, what's the cheapest deep learning PC that could possibly be built in 2020? After doing some research and weighing various component options, I managed to compile a brand new deep learning PC build that comes out to an unbelievable $444.91. In this episode, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build your own affordable deep learning computer, both the hardware and the software, and test out its GPU acceleration capability by training PyTorch's standard image classifier example on a dataset which contains 60,000 images of everyday objects. Getting both the hardware and software set up isn't as complicated as you might think. In fact, it can all be done in a few hours. But before we get to that, let me describe to you what the building blocks of deep learning actually are. At the core of it all, we need energy in the form of electricity to power computations. These computations run on NVIDIA's GPUs, which have dozens more cores than CPUs and were originally designed to speed up gaming algorithms like ray tracing. But it turns out this also allows them to run many neural network operations simultaneously, specifically matrix math operations, resulting in massive speedups. This GPU-enabled computer needs to have an operating system to support basic system functions. Windows, Linux, OS X, and Skynet are all compatible. And the operating system needs to have a C language compiler. A C compiler is a program that converts human-readable C code into a machine-readable language so that a computer can execute it. The popular deep learning libraries all have Python APIs. But under the hood, they pretty much all leverage C to handle more complex tasks like efficient memory allocation and threading. C compilers are native to Mac and Linux, called Clang and GCC respectively. For Windows, it needs to be downloaded in the form of Visual Studio. But while C is a wonderful language, it wasn't specifically designed to leverage the full parallel processing capabilities of GPU architecture, and that's why CUDA is needed. CUDA is a GPU-specific platform. It's a collection of compilation tools, a programming model, and architecture all built on top of the C language. CUDA optimized C code is what truly gives deep neural networks their state-of-the-art results. Hey, do you wanna go out sometime? I'm a CUDA professional. I love you. That was easy. And NVIDIA has already built CUDA libraries for a variety of tasks. For neural network training, there's CUDNN. For inference, there's TensorRT. For computer vision, there's VisionWorks. For distributed GPUs, there's KubeLoss. Built on top of these CUDA libraries are our beloved Python frameworks designed to make building and training neural networks simple. That includes PyTorch, TensorFlow, MXNet, NLTK, and others. Using this stack, we can download a dataset, then train a model on it. Now, let's get to talking hardware. First of all, there are some great DIY cheap gaming computer tutorial videos right here on YouTube, and some are even cheaper than the one that I've compiled. But a gaming computer is not the same as a deep learning computer, and that's for two reasons. One, we specifically need an NVIDIA GPU that's CUDA enabled. The cheaper AMD GPUs they list won't work for deep learning. And a lot of those builds either pull from refurbished part lists or the parts only ship to the United States, which keep costs low. But I chose Newegg for parts because of their inclusive global shipping policy. I've had my own deep learning computer for about two years now, and it cost me $1,600 worth of parts at the time. The case is a Corsair 750D ATX. The processor is an Intel Core i7. 
It's got 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of hard disk space to store all my prawn, just kidding, an Asus Prime Z370 motherboard, and a 1080 Ti GeForce GPU. But I'm not gonna recommend you build that because it's been two years since then and components are now cheaper. I built the list of parts around the most affordable CUDA enabled GPU I could find, the GTX 1650. Just last year, Nvidia introduced it as their most affordable GPU yet, designed to play 1080p games. Its predecessor was the GTX 1050, and Nvidia said the 1650 was 70% faster. Its architecture, named Turing, after the OG himself, who's probably off solving P equals NP in the afterlife right now, uses a technology called tensor cores to accelerate deep learning inference. Tensor cores each perform a fused matrix multiply add operation. One thing to note about the 1650 though is that it's only got four gigs of RAM. What that means is that it will be easy to run into memory issues while training large models on big data sets if the predefined batch size is too large. Thus, it will be necessary to train in smaller batches to avoid that. The trade-off is that the smaller the batch size, the longer the training time. But that's the benefit of having your own machine. Besides it being cheaper, you can also leave it training as long as you want. Google Colab, a cloud GPU training tool, is amazing, but it has an absolute timeout of 12 hours. For the RAM, I chose this South Korean memory supplier company called Hynix because BTS is amazing, oh my god, no, but also because it offers 8 gigs of memory for only $27. The hard drive is a 1 terabyte Seagate for $70. The motherboard is an MSI Pro A320M for about $60. MSI is a reputable brand which supports AMD CPUs, which is what I chose. The, the AMD Ryzen 3 series 4 core 3.1 gig CPU for $62. And to power it all, I found a 450 watt Corsair power supply, which will provide more than enough power for this GPU, priced at $50. Lastly, I chose a PC case with two fans built in for cooling at $26. The whole thing comes out to just $444.91, cheaper than a gold toilet seat. And I really don't think we could get this price much lower. The only option is that we could shave off the price of storage by using 512 gigs instead of a terabyte. But then what's the point of deep learning without big data? We're gonna want at least one terabyte to store any big data sets we come across. Linus Tech Tips just released this amazing first person POV PC build video, which takes you through the process from start to finish. And if you prefer a blog post tutorial, Instructables has a 23 step tutorial on putting a PC together. I'll link you to both and everything else I talk about in the video description. And if you're new here, hit subscribe. I found a pre-built desktop PC by ABS for $600 that uses the same GPU. The only downside besides the $150 price increase is the fact that its storage space is only 512 gigs instead of a terabyte. But it also comes with a keyboard and a mouse. Now that the hardware is out of the way, let's move on to the funnest part, the software setup process. There are five steps here. We have to first install the driver for our specific GPU, the CUDA toolkit, the CUDA deep neural network library, an app called Docker, and a Docker image that contains all the relevant deep learning libraries we need. Let's go through each step in order on my Windows machine. We're going to first install our driver from the NVIDIA website by selecting the proper dropdown options. Once installed, we'll need to restart our system. Then we can install the CUDA toolkit. On the NVIDIA developer website, we can see a link to download CUDA for our specific operating system. Make sure to get the latest version. It's going to be a local installer file, an EXE for Windows and a DMG for Mac and a run file for Linux, of course. So no need for terminal just yet, it's a GUI. Also, it'll ask us to install Visual Studio on Windows in order to use its C compiler. After CUDA has been installed, we'll move on to the CUDA Deep Neural Network Library. I don't need a girl, boy, I got my GPU. 
I don't need a car, boy, I got my GPU. I don't need money, boy, wait, yes I do. This is NVIDIA's library specifically made to accelerate neural network operations, and it's used heavily by all the major deep learning frameworks under the hood to tune heavily used routines like forward and backward propagation. We'll need to join the NVIDIA developer program to download it, but at least it's free to join. Once downloaded, we'll need to extract it and copy it to the CUDA toolkit directory along with the other libraries in the CUDA toolkit. Now that we have our GPU environment set up, we're going to install Docker from the Docker website using the downloadable installer. Docker is a container platform and containers are a software construct that packages up code and its dependencies into a single environment so that it can run quickly in any computing environment without you needing to reinstall any dependencies. A huge lifesaver for us. The reason we want to download Docker is because I found this wonderful Docker container by Petronetto that has it all. The latest version of Python, PyTorch, Jupyter Notebooks, and more. We'll first download the repository, then build the included Docker file to install all of its associated dependencies from Docker Hub. Then once installed, we'll run it using Docker Run. Lastly, in a Jupyter Notebook, we can choose a library, let's say PyTorch, by importing it and test out our GPU integration by calling CUDA get device name. If it returns the name of our GPU, congratulations, we successfully set up our environment. Now that we've done that, let's run through the standard image classifier example by the PyTorch team on the CIFAR dataset to train our model on our local machine. Using Torch Vision, we can load up the CIFAR dataset, downloading it from the PyTorch server. We'll define a few labels, then visualize some of the training images. Now we can define a convolutional network. These are the ones best suited for image classification problems. Once trained, we can save our trained model for later use, say in our own mobile app, then test the network on the testing set to see if it classifies accurately. The winner of last week's coding challenge is Anch David. Anch is using AlphaFold to try and visualize the coronavirus. He's still working on it, but at least he's working on it. So good job, Anch. And that's it. I hope to see you start building your own deep learning app soon. And until next time, happy learning.